So my name is Pepe Marquez. I am the scientific coordinator of Fermat, and I'm happy to give you like an introduction to uh, some of the stuff that we are doing in Fermat. Of course, I cannot cover uh, everything, and I will possibly be very shallow. But uh, we are uh, most of the team is in here, so please just uh, uh, continue and try to scratch the surface as, as much as you can do in this user meeting. So. Uh, first of all, um, uh, what is Fermat and, uh, and Nomad? I, I guess I don't need to introduce what the NFDI is. It has been like, beautifully introduced by us, but for some other people that, just in case you don't know, it's the National Research Data Infrastructure. And Fermat is one consortium of that. Uh, and we cover the, uh, the solid state physics. So our, our main goal is to try to build like a fair federated data infrastructure for solid state physics and these aspects of, of material science. Um, and, uh, uh, this is kind of like a color wheel that represents us, and I will go through it like uh, several times during the presentation. But uh, what I wanted to highlight is like what are uh, our main values, and and the fair value is obviously fair. It comes in our uh, in our name, uh, and with fair we try to uh, interpret this as not only findable, accessible, interoperable, and repurposable or reusable, but we want to build an infrastructure that it makes data findable and AI ready so that you can retrieve the data as a human, also as a machine, and then you have like ways to, to also do machine learning uh, directly with that. Uh, so everything that we do is open source. We do, it's free, as free as it gets, and as transparent as we can make it. Uh, we also promote open science, uh, and that is because we believe that open science is simply doing science uh, better, uh, and we have a very bottom-up approach as the DFG. Uh, so we just try to connect directly with the researchers and try to help them uh, connect to our infrastructure. And I guess the best example is, is this user meeting where we uh, bring the people together and, and discuss uh, how, how we can improve and connect with them uh, better. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so how we organize. Uh, so we are a big team. Uh, so the initial proposal was put together with uh, around 60 PIs across Germany, including uh, universities, research institutions, and uh, um, um, Hochschule. Uh, so Claudia is the uh, spokesperson, which we have in here. Uh, the deputy spokesperson is Christoph Koch, uh, which is also a professor of uh, HU uh, Berlin. And we are around 30 central co-workers. And in contrast to other uh, consortia of the NFDI, most of us, we are located in here. We are centralized in Berlin in one corridor, just like in there. And this allows us like, to interact like, m in a much more personal level and try to bring like, a very cohesive project and, and so on. I think this is something that I wanted to highlight that I think that is, is, is working really great. Um, so yeah, we are a very welcoming group uh, in good times. And we are very warm also in not so warm times. Uh, so we hope that you find this in here and then you can uh, try to talk to us. Um, so and what, what, what are we doing like in more practical terms? Um, uh, so we are organizing what we call areas. And this is what is represented in this, in this circle. Um, uh, so I guess the uh, most populated area is this infrastructure, which is the one like dedicated to develop, uh, developing the core functionalities of the software that, that we develop. And then we have one area about like synthesis, one of experimental characterization, uh, computation, then one about use cases, like try to exploit this. Uh, uh, and then one about training, and then one about coordination, where uh, I, I typically work on. Uh, and what do we do? So do we do many things, but uh, I would say that our main product is a software that is called Nomad. And this is a web-based software for fair research data management in, in material science. Um, uh, and, I, and I will talk uh, about this. Um, uh, so, so Nomad is is older than, than Fermat. Uh, so Fermat is right now two years old. Nomad was launched uh, originally as an archive and repository for uh, density functional uh, data uh, in 2014. And I brought like a couple of screenshots just in case you haven't seen this. Uh, maybe most of you are already familiarized how this looks. Uh, but you, you face like a, a search interface when you can like, look for materials. For example, I'm looking in here for, for zinc, uh, materials containing zinc and selenium. I want to look for properties of bank structure properties of materials that contain uh, uh, zinc and selenium. And then you get like prompted with a, a huge amount of, of results in there. And then you can just navigate deeper, uh, matching your search criteria. And then you go into an individual entry. And then you get presented with an overview. What is this entry about? Which material is in here? which properties have been calculated. So you can uh, like really uh, know what is this about. And then if you go deeper, you get presented with the whole hierarchical model of this data that you can access. Uh, you can navigate by human, but you can just uh, get some code like, to navigate through, through this. And this data is 
highly well documented. Every item gets uh, a human readable description, but it also gets very well described with units, what shape has this data, and so on. Um, so, uh, but this is uh, what we want to do in Fermat. This is a lot of stuff in here, so many tasks that we have. We want to cover material synthesis, as I mentioned, characterization, expand theory and computation, support this with our digital infrastructure, and we want to train uh, both our developers, but also the community on how to like join uh, this. Uh, so if we look at this, uh, this like massive wheel, so our starting point is this, and we want to cover this, this whole thing uh, with, with Nomad. So how are we doing uh, this? I will try to get you through this wheel now. The Nomad journey through with Fermat. Um, typically we go, this is in alphabetical, the synthesis is what we call area A in here, so this is an alphabetical order. I will go today with a different order and I will start with uh, theory and computation because of historical reasons. So, uh, so what we want to cover in here is ab initio calculation, which it was what we started in Fermat, so we want to extend this. Uh, we want to also include like classical simulations and multi-scale modeling. This is molecular dynamics, uh, for example, and we want to extend to excitation, excited state calculations. So. Uh, so how is this looking at the moment? Um, actually, this header is uh, not up to date. I think we have more than three million materials right now. Uh, so what, how, how Nomad works is like we have support for more than 60 codes, uh, and now we have included uh, GW and DMFT. Uh, and how it works is like a user goes to the interface, like zip all their input and output calculations uh, of all of these 60 codes. You drag and drop all your calculations and then Nomad tries to process this information, like makes it interoperable and it registers these entries and put it into, into, a, into a common format. And then you can just like publish your, your data sets, generate like a persistent identifier that can be cited and reused and so on. And all this data that it gets in here is like fair and AI ready and I will show you this uh, later on. So at the moment we have 12 million entries, um, approaching 30 million actually. More than three million materials represented in there, and I think a few hundred terabytes of, of, of data. Uh, so we are extending now beyond DFT, and this is an example of molecular dynamics. Uh, we are like uh, mainly giving support at the moment to two very popular codes. This is Gromax and LAMPS, and this we don't only like give support like that you can like get your code registered. We build like features that allow you to explore this data more efficiently. And this, for example, a hierarchical viewer to explore very complex systems. I mean, this is a simulation of a protein in, in, in a water system, and then you can even navigate to the individual uh, uh, in, individual molecules in, inside. Uh, some other examples is about excited state calculations. So if you, one of you is like related to this, uh, we are starting to have support for this for uh, green functions, methods, and the MFT. And Chema is one of the experts, so please reaching out uh, later. I think he has a poster about this. Uh, and then we are also like including like ways to visualize computational workflows. So, so there are some standard workflows that we can like map automatically. And this, for example, uh, I guess a geometry optimization where you input a structure and then you relax the structure and then you finally uh, finally get your output calculations. And this kind of a dynamic widget that you click and it navigates you through what you have been doing. Uh, but we are also supporting like custom workflows that you can like connect different type of calculations together in a very, very complex systems and it allows you to navigate this. And this is, for example, you first do a geometry optimization, then you do molecular dynamics calculation, then you do another molecular dynamics calculation, and then you can navigate this very dynamically in our interface. Um, and I told you before that what we produce is AI ready. And one example of this is I, I pull up this, uh, this preprint, it's not even uh, published yet. It's called Crystal LLM, and this is from some researchers from the UK, from the University of Reading. Uh, so what they did is that they built a crystal structure generate, generated tool based on large language models. And uh, how they do this is like they took a lot of data from Nomad, like three million different materials in there. So how it works is like users upload their input and output files like to Nomad. They do the individual calculations, and then they generate these three million material entries. Then, then Nomad makes this data fair in an automated fashion, as I mentioned before. And then uh, uh, these researchers uh, from the UK, they build Crystal LLM uh, with data from Nomad, uh, with really big data from Nomad. And then they build a tool that allows you to generate like new input files for further calculations. So feeling like a, what I call like a full, like fair research cycle. So this original like uses that they created these input files. Now they get like prompted with a new tool that it was generated with original data that, that they were uploading into that. Okay, so this is about theory. Um, 
but now we want to do like many more things. So how about the infrastructure? How are we developing this? Um, when we want, what we want to build is a federated data infrastructure. Um, I try to explain you what I mean with federated. So our starting point is that you, as an individual, individual researcher, you get prompted to Nomad, which is the web service that we're, that we're hosting here. And then you can upload your data in there, and this we make it uh, um, fair, and so on. Uh, but now we want to cover a lot of like experimental solid state physics and material science. So this is not valid anymore because this is a research process that requires like daily input and, and daily work. Uh, uh, so what we are building is a federated in, uh, infrastructure in which you can have a normal installation like locally, and I will describe uh, what I mean with this in your lab. And you can completely customize your nomad. Uh, we have a central nomad in here, and then your nomad you can plug to your instruments and you can interact with this uh, in a progressive way. Uh, and then another group which has associated instruments and so on can copy your installation and then build like their own local installation. And like this is what we mean with a federated network where you get your local nomad working in your lab or in your institution. Uh, you do your research, work with your data. When you're ready to publish your data, you can ship it to the central nomad and make it available, interoperable for, for everybody. Um, so yeah, to build this, now nomad needs to come in with two flavors. So this is the, what we call the central service, the central nomad. And this is, serves as an archive and repository where like, all the data like, gets like, put together and then you can explore it and, 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 and analyze it directly in there. But then the second flavor is what we call a nomad oasis. And this is what you can bring to your lab or to your institution, install in there, customize, then plug directly to the instruments that the data like, can get uh, ship directly to the installation. You can build and customize electronic laboratory notebooks to interact directly with the graphical user interface and digi digitalize your data directly. And you can even plug to your uh, HPC if you want to like run calculations and drag it back to, to your Nomad installation straight away. And then eventually you can ship the data to Nomad. Uh, so having this said, Many of you might have already an Oasis installed. This is a very piloting, so it's like heavily under development and so on. So we are having like a pilot phase right now. So if you have an Oasis, uh, so now we have a form to register your Oasis, and I will really encourage you to do this. And the reason for that is because it gives us like a contact point um, to update you with like new features or with some issues that uh, that we have. Uh, and also, it allows us like to to see how much how much support we are receiving and so on. So please, go to the Nomad web page and register your OSS if you can. Um, so, material synthesis area A. Uh, so what we aim to do with material synthesis is like we want to develop data models and tools towards being able to do reproducible synthesis. That when you grow a material in your lab, you another person comes and wants to reproduce your, your, your synthesis of your material can do it. And this is a huge task. I mean, this is really, really difficult. Uh, we need to build tools that allow us to digitalize all of these like, synthesis data. And, and we are like, covering the whole, the whole scope of it. Like, we're going to cover synthesis methods from, from the melt phase, uh, from the gas phase, from the gas phase that would be uh, physical vapor deposition methods, I guess pattering, thermal evaporation, and so on. And then solid phase and solution, like even if you like a spin coat in a spin coat something in your lab, we're going to like have a schema start that allow you to digitalize this and also by polymerization and by assembly. Um, and some examples of how we're doing this. So what we're building is like ontologies and data schemas that cover this. This is one example uh, that Hampus sitting in here up front uh, is working on. It's a physical vapor deposition ontology. Uh, where he defines a lot of classes that allow us to digitalize this. Um, we are just not defining ontologies for the sake of defining ontologies. We are doing like with a real purpose, and it is like to power our tools to do this. Uh, so when we define a rate in our ontology that you have, you are, have like an item in here that allows you to digitalize this rate, and this can be reused across any labs that do thermal evaporation into that. Uh, how about experimental characterization? So this is what we call area B. Uh, so here um, we decided to have like a, 
really big support to certain uh, type of characterization. In this particular case is uh, angle, angle result photo emission spectroscopy and color level spectroscopy, which we're treating more or less in a, in a common way. Uh, very niche uh, and complex techniques like atom probe tomography, electron microscopy and spectroscopy, and optical spectroscopy. And this is in the broad terms, like from ellipsometry to photoluminescence, from uh, UVVs, and so on. And what this team is working on, on a lot is, is in a standardization. And they work very closely uh, with Nexus, which is a format that exists for uh, for more than 30 years, it has an international committee that allows us to uh, standardize this data, so to make these concepts very persistent and so on. And they have like a Fermat Nexus proposal in there where they have already proposed like a lot of new concepts and adaptation for that. Uh, and again, we are not doing only data modeling for the sake of doing data modeling, it's because we want to power our infrastructure. This is an example, for example, of how you can uh, have um, Multi-dimensional photo emission and spectroscopy normal visualized. We, we build tools that allow you also to navigate like large amounts of data and complex data in, in our infrastructure. Um, so um, we want to demonstrate these uh, tools that we are uh, producing with, with use cases. Uh, and this use case like treats uh, applications of solid state physics in materials in, in, in devices and, and use cases. And th this could be like photovoltaics, could be heterogeneous catalysis, could be battery materials. Uh, we also like work heavily in like educating and introducing AI methods and machine learning methods and, and magnetic materials and also metal organic frameworks. Uh, I will give some examples of that because I believe there are some uses related to some of these use cases in the audience. Uh, so the first thing that we that we did uh, is that we created a faceted like search like now in Nomad that you don't get prompted with any like. 12 million entries and you don't know how to navigate it. So right now you can have a very faceted search. And, and the first use case that we put is, is, is solar cells uh, in here. So now you can go in Nomad and you can like face like a, a search interface for particular solar cells. And here we have like around 40,000 solar cells that they come mainly from the perovskite database, which is a project that uh, Professor Eva Unger, I don't know if she's in the audience, but I know that there are some people from, from her group around uh, like push a lot and what we make is like we took this data we made it interoperable that you can explore it and so on and, and we build dynamic uh, dashboards that allow you to explore uh, very very large uh, multi-dimensional data sets and so here for example you can select okay I want to look for solar cells that their active layer contains tin uh, and you get like automatic updates of this and then I also want to look at solar cells that not only contain tin but contain uh, that use uh, C60 as an electron transport layer and then furthermore, like I want to look what whole transport layers have been kind of like under using this. And this is completely customizable, so you can change it and define it how, how you want um, for your application. So what is so what we need to do with this is also provide tools that allow you to, to digitize your data. It's not only data coming from database, but we want this to be used with the data from your lab. So what we build is uh, electronic laboratory notebooks that allow you to uh, upload your data in a very structured way. And not only that, that it can process your data on the fly and augment the data. So if you upload one spectrum, as we did in here, it's an EQ spectrum, uh, you can uh, customize your installation that it derives, uh, for example, the banga from the spectrum on the fly, and this does it like in a consistent way, a way for all the users of your lab and for all the installations across many labs that are uh, installed with this. Um, and this like solar cell use case is actually being piloted right now. Uh, we will hear from our first like uh, one of our first like pilot researchers, Daniel, who is uh, sitting in there. Uh, so this federated data infrastructure for this use case is somehow being piloted that, that we envision. Uh, uh, so we have an installation uh, that Michael Gote, a data sewer from from the HIB, uh, is like highly customizing with us. Uh, that is installed uh, here at the Helmholtz Center in Berlin, and actually. Uh, at HAU Berlin, I think it's hosted at the moment in here. And then this installation gets replicated, like in installed in a lab in the KIT. Uh, so the data that it gets produced here in Karlsruhe is highly interoperable, uh, I would say, exactly following the same schemas as, as the data that it gets in Berlin. And I think this is actually uh, very nice. Um, so we are pushing this be beyond solar cells. And I think in the next weeks, we will see also an heterogeneous catalysis uh, app where it allows you like to navigate some experimental heterogeneous catalysis uh, producing there. And we also have one coming that I don't even know if even today is uh, uh, possible to see, 
which is about metal organic frameworks. So you can search uh, more than 40,000 uh, calculated metal organic frameworks with uh, the scriptos. And I think this is uh, one of the videos of how you can uh, like explore this. Uh, but when you get your entries, then you also get like very uh, faceted views of, of this metal organic framework. So it allows you to deconstruct these uh, this, uh, MOVs and look at also how these have been built with these subunits and uh, look at quantities like, for example, that describe the porosity of, of, of these compounds. Um, so with this, I get to the last uh, area that I want to talk about. And this is the area F, which is training and outreach. Uh, they are the main organizers of this event, uh, so they do what we are seeing in here, but they, they do also many things. So they, they are in, in charge of the user support training and outreach. They maintain uh, our YouTube channel, which has 270 videos. Uh, this is Fermat and Nomad. Uh, we have like a lot of like, video tutorials in there, and they are the ones that created this research data management plan that it was mentioned in the previous talk by Michelle. Uh, and with this, I wanted to say that we are hiring. We are looking for a research data support position for a European project, which is associated with us, that is called Soulmates. So, and we are also looking for a data expert for classical molecular simulations to work with us. And with this, I would like to welcome you to the FEMA community. I encourage you to talk to us, uh, get to know us, and thank you very much for your attention.